Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee, green estate in the land of the free. Raised in the woods so he knew every tree. Killed him a bar when he was only three. Davy, Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. Well, it's a cold and cloudy day here in Tennessee, but I thought I would stop in and take you guys on a quick tour of the spot that Davy Crockett was born. Um, this is a state park here in Tennessee, and they've put up this little home here, a little log home on the spot where he was born. He was born here August 17th, 1786, to John and Rebecca Crockett. So, he lived here until he was six years old, and the original home that was here is gone, but they have put this recreation log cabin in place so that you can get the feel of what the farm would have been like here um, along the banks of the beautiful Nolichucky River uh, back in the late 1700s when he was born here. He lived here until 1792 um, when he was six years old and the family began to move around uh, East Tennessee a little bit looking for work. His father fell on hard times uh, quite often it seems and uh, they finally settled over near Morristown Tennessee and his father established a tavern there but uh, Davy's early life it was one of hardship living out here in the mountains of East Tennessee is a lot different than it is out here now um, and times were tough back then and at the age of 12 uh, his father made him an indentured servant to Jacob Siler. And uh, it was kind of in an effort to relieve the family debt. So uh, he worked, Davy worked during that time as a buckaroo. He tended cattle and he would take trips up to Virginia taking cattle. So he, he worked for several years doing that. And then he went and became an apprentice hat maker. So it's pretty neat the the history behind Davy and and the things that that happened. But after he had worked off his indentured servitude, he went back to his father's place in Morristown at the tavern, and his father was still in debt. So he spent another four years working to pay off his father's debt there. So there was a big sense of family in Appalachia at that time, and. Uh, after he got the, the debt paid off to his father out there, he started looking for a lady friend to live in the mountains with. And I guess that was a challenge for him. He, uh, he kind of got left at the altar by a lady, and he was rejected by another woman. And then finally he found a woman who married him. And his life kind of just went on from there. He, he was uh, elected to the Tennessee State Legislature and U.S. Congress uh, in the 1820s, and he was he opposed Andrew Jackson's policies a lot during that time. And uh, I guess in the end, he kind of got frustrated with uh, Andrew Jackson's policies and went to Texas. And he got involved in the incident there at the Alamo, and kind of the rest is history. So this sign is pretty interesting. It, it says, everyone described him as tall, but it was probably because of his good posture. He liked his hair long and was a bit of a stranger to a comb. So here's a sign which summarizes the life of Davy Crockett, and it talks a little bit about some of the things I was talking about earlier. Um, it talked about how he was raised in the frontier and hired out. Um, he was an indentured servant, like I was talking about. Um, and this one's kind of funny. He, to avoid punishment from his father for skipping school, he ran away for almost three years, going as far as Baltimore. Um, and this one talks about his unsuccessful courtships and his marriage to uh, Mary Polly Finley in 1806. They had two sons, and uh, they moved to Middle Tennessee and had a daughter, Mary, and 
Davy entered the Creek War and served under Andrew Jackson. And then his wife died in 1815, and he eventually married Elizabeth Patton, who already had two children. And they have three children between 1816 and 1822. So I think that puts his child count at six plus her two. So that would be eight children. Um, he went to North Alabama and got malaria, almost died. Um, and then it kind of talks about the beginnings of his political career and uh, his, how he excelled. In bear hunting, and I think that's probably where the legend about him killing a bear when he was three uh, came into being. And it talks about him almost being killed when he had a flatboat crash. And uh, it talks about him gaining national celebrity. And then uh, they, they got in an argument with Andrew Jackson, and it was mostly over Jackson's desire to remove Indians off of their ancestral lands. Davy Crockett, uh, it's not well known, but he was a big defender of the Native Americans here in this area. So it's kind of uh, neat how the narrative of, of people's lives changes over the course of, of history and uh, how legends and stories are evolved over the years. I do want to dispel a few of the myths um, from the popular Davy Crockett song. It starts, Born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. We are in a river valley. I'm just saying. The uh, state park they have here is pretty neat, the way they've interpreted this whole area and uh, Appalachia and Davy Crockett's contribution to the history of, of America. So if you ever get a chance to come out here, I highly recommend it. So I knew when I came out today I was going to shoot this Davy Crockett video and uh, there was a house real close to there that I wanted to get permission at and I decided I'd go ahead and stop there and hunt, if I could get permission, hunt until I found one relic. I ended up staying until I found three relics. One good relic that I'm happy with. So, at any rate, here's a little bit of what happened there for that hunt. I am out at a brand new location. I just got permission at this house right here. It was built in 1820. And uh, it's really just this yard. <clears throat> it's the only area I've had any permission to hunt. But, I was wandering around, I've been digging a lot of trash. I just now dug this signal right here. I'm hoping you guys can see this, I'm shooting with my GoPro today. But, there is a really nice button with the shank still intact. And, it looks like it's going to be plain on the front. But, uh, that's a great start. This is going to be my last hunt of 2015. It's, uh... December 31st, 2015, so this is it, last hunt of the year, and here's an old pocket knife that just came out of the ground. It's uh, got one of those little shield emblems on it, which I don't know how old that would date it to, but it's pretty old, and it's a neat find. I'll take it. I'm definitely glad to be digging some of the last relics of 2015 today. It's always great when you can get on a a new permission and start digging relics so it's a happy day and hopefully we'll be digging some more here in a few minutes all right <clears throat> i'm still hunting this 1820s home site and just got this indian head penny come out of the ground don't know what year exactly yet let's see if we can see there it's starting to come in looks like 1890 something 1899 maybe anyway that's another good find could be the last relic of 2015 here's a nice little bale seal that just came out of the ground can't quite make it out just now uh, I think it's a 
think it's a railroad baggage seal but uh, don't know clean it up when we get home have a little bit better look I hope you guys have an amazing 2016 and I know I'm gonna be out there hunting and looking for artillery and more relics so maybe we'll cross paths then until then happy new year and happy hunting baby, baby Crockett, king of the wild frontier.